five incredibly easy steps to woodworking. One, fell a tree. Two, milled said tree. Three, smooth that lumber so it feels like you're petting a dolphin. Four, apply a finish. Five, install accordingly. See, it's so simple. Five steps. That's less steps than it takes to get up a flight of stairs. But I'm not gonna fluff your rear end like a pillow and just say it's easy, because most things do still in fact require effort, time, and resources. But we could show you how to do those things, and what you do with the information is entirely up to you. Or you could just watch me and raccoons and stuff. So the ongoing project has been renovating a basement in an investment property. There was a surprise teachable moment at the start of this, where we learned that for any property you wanna buy, you should check the town's GIS map and see if the home happens to be on an active aquifer. Hooray for secret water! So then there was some dehumidifying, a demo of an unnecessary wall, the painting of the ceiling, and being a busy beaver playing with really, really, really long pieces of wood. So now it's time to take that wood that is seasoned and dried out and put it to use, making this waffled house look like a waffle home, or something to that effect. Just gonna make it look nice. So let's dive right back into it. Ball is life. is to finish the wood by sealing it with a varnish or a polyurethane. This here happens to be a polyurethane that will bring out the grain with a bit of a golden oak color. Look at this, golden oak. This will be a phenomenal contrast to the blackout ceilings and the white painted walls. And by sparingly using it, your eyes will gravitate to the warmth of this color. Another thing you'll notice is the way that it highlights both the knots in the wood and the several patterns of the sanding it was intentional to keep the sanding irregular to create a thatch pattern that weathers the board. I already see nothing. Yeah. Look at that. Instant gratification. You can see the sanding markings, the grain highlights, the poly soaking in. It is just such a satisfying process. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Look, right? You see? Yeah. Oop, I need more. Here we go. But you can see how it weathers it. Gives it a really different appeal. Some might like it, some might not. Hey, do what you want in your place. But given ideas, just, that's, that's it and that's all. I like this like Bob Ross likes painting, man. Like this is just so satisfying. Let's decide, maybe there's a happy tree, evergreen tree. He lives right there. Use just the corner of the brush, pushing, making the bristles bend slightly downward and you just paint a bigger tree right over the top. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. I'm not like Bob Ross though. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna purposely miss this spot and just see if it triggers you. Yeah, yeah, does it? Yeah, triggers me too, I know. It's like a lesson in patience. Hopefully I come back to it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I have to find out. Bob Ross would never do this to you. Happy accidents. All right, so here's the stack of wood that will make up the trim that's gonna be over here, here, and here. And here, pretty much everywhere that wood's needed, wood's gonna be provided. While we await the trim and the wood pieces being finished to cure, we can also work on the other aspects here. Every now and then, you ask yourself, how did something get so not level? How did this happen? Why do I have to shim this much? I don't know, but I'm gonna fix it. Beauty of a piece of trim. Just set it and forget it. There you go, secret squirrel. Secret squirrel action. Ugh. So in an effort to do this as a very sustainable renovation, the knotty pine that's here will stay since 
the flood didn't actually affect it. These boards were sealed 20 times over. And this is gonna be whitewashed, which now, now, I know many people prefer the wood look, but I don't live here. So we wanna make something that is marketable, updated, and clean. Plus in doing so, the milled pieces will be highlighted in the polarity of everything else with the dark ceiling and the white walls. Give it that pop of color, as they say on those weird home improvement shows. <laughs> So we're gonna do some wiring and this is what I've come up with for the diagram for light. This is the bird's eye view. This is the front of the room view. That is this wall right here. Here's what we're looking at for the lighting. We've got 10 lights dispersed throughout the space. These are the support columns. And then this is a little built-in angular piece here. We have six floating above the area of the couch and coffee table in front of the TV. And then we'll have four in the back area hanging out by beanbag land. Yeah. Mm, this banana seems it's looking like banana bread or smoothie territory. Whoa. Got our live wire and our wires to tie in to daisy chain. Our other LED lights over to here. Dangles here, got those ones cherry rigged into the wall over here. What you doing out here? Here I am, sanding wood. What's that? That's my old smoky moonshine. That's me through these trying days. Moonshine? Why not moon? Why is it moan? I was nervous. My wife might be watching. <laughs> you promoting a safe working environment, Thomas? <clears throat> Providing a workable work environment. <laughs> makes my work a little more tolerable. All right, so don't ask you for help with stuff. I understood. Got it. Oh, All right. You can always ask yeah. me. The answer might not be yes, though. If that's all I have left for scrap, that's pretty good. Furwood. All right, so these strapping pieces are gonna be used as a backing to use as a level to get me with this aluminum channel here, which will have this diffuser on top of it, and we'll have an LED light inside it. Give it that whole zhwoom effect. Look at this, look at this sandwich. It's gonna be this piece here, that piece there, this piece there. It'll be this clean setup, and then there will be the little bit of reveal and who, who doesn't like a reveal? Drop Overseer is here. What do you think? You approve? And you're gonna just tell people to like, share, and subscribe, aren't you? Hi. Boops. Free boops. Sweet pup. look infinitely better once the beam is dressed properly. These diffusers are sometimes an absolute pain to put on no matter what you do. It sounds like a chiropractor cracking someone's back. Oh! oh. I feel fantastic! Yes! Little reveal action right there. All right, so what we're doing here, A, making sure our level is solid, B, would you just look at that? 
golden oak finish. Would you just look at it? I love what stain can do for a piece of wood. So what I've done is I've measured up my 16 inches here and ran my tape lines so I know where to properly poke a lag into that and uh, not have a bad time. Here's what the shelves look like in here. Yeah, I gotta finish the trim, I know, I know. The key here, free floating. Nobody wants to see your brackets. Nobody wants to see your hardware supporting it up. You wanna look at it and be like, how does it do it? How does it float there? It's just secured on the sides. That's where we're at. There's some trim lights and stuff for you. And in the world of transparency and clarity that doesn't really seem to exist on YouTube, I did not nail off that support column because the floor's not in. And I want it to be cut to the exact size than to be a McMuffin that needs to put trim on trim. So for the eagle eye people that are like, how did I put it together? Magic? Or a knee pad? Yeah, probably a knee pad, huh? Yeah. We're gonna need those for the flooring which will be coming up next. I hope you have yourself an exquisite day. And no, I didn't forget about you. Here, here's that last spot, um, the stain. Ciao.